Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Guys, as promised, today I am back and we're going to start reviewing the ICD-10-CM coding guidelines. October 1 is right around the corner. And as you know, October 1, we start 2024 coding guidelines. The ICD-10-CM classification, which I explained to you in my last video, how to go to cms.gov to find these coding guidelines. Let me minimize my box so I can show you what they look like. Right, this is what the official coding guidelines look like. These are, are our rules to coding. Any coding program that you attend should be going based on these rules. I always tell my students, study these rules. When I'm teaching, if I say anything off, you should be able to quote this rule back to me to correct me and show me where, no, 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 this is what the coding rule states. So again, these ICD-10-CM official guidelines for coding and reporting are our rules to coding. It says here that a morbidity classification uh, ailment, whatever your diagnoses are, is published by the United States for classifying diagnoses and the reason for visits in all healthcare settings. They provide a common language for recording, reporting, and monitoring of diseases. This allows the world to compare and share data in a consistent and standard way. I love the fact that most ICD-10-CM codebooks come with these guidelines included in the front of the book. So should you have a question arise, you can go right to the front of your book to find these coding guidelines. While you're taking your CPC exam, you're thinking, okay, hypertensive, chronic kidney disease, how many codes are involved? Go right to your coding guidelines. Please note that different publishers, the AAPC, Optum, the AMA, put different amenities in each of their books. So the where these specific coding guidelines are located, whether they're at the beginning or the back, again, will depend on these publishers. But also with the AAPC's ICD-10-CM, at the beginning of each section within your tabular, they've also in included the coding guidelines that apply to that particular section in the tabular. Other code books that I've, I've used or other publishers code books that I've worked with have these coding guidelines in different sections throughout the book. So again, it's going to depend on your publisher. Now, these guidelines have been approved by four different organizations. It states right here, the American Hospital Association, AHA, the American Health Information Management Association, AHIMA, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, and the National Center for Health Statistics, NCHS. So these guidelines are a set of rules that have been developed to accompany and complement the official conventions. We're going to cover conventions today. And these instructions are provided within the code book, the ICD-10-CM itself the instructions and conventions of the classification take precedence over the guidelines. So as you're coding in your code book and your code book says, use an additional code, it's saying your code book, that classification takes precedence over these guidelines. These guidelines will give you the rules, but the actual um, specificity that's gonna be required for some coding will be identified within the classification. There's been a joint effort between the healthcare provider and the coder. This is essential. We have to work together with our providers to be able to achieve complete and accurate documentation, code assignment, and reporting of these diagnoses and these procedures. And as you'll notice as we're going through this, that these guidelines are organized into four different sections. Now, I've accompanied a Word document that I put together to follow as well. And these four different sections of this um, ICD-10-CM classification are Section 1. Let me get down here where these are. 
is the Convention's General Coding Guidelines and Chapter Specific Guidelines. Section 2 are Chapter Specific Coding Guidelines. And it goes through all. We are now at 22 chapters. Remember, until we added COVID, we had 21 chapters. And these chapters, if you look at the titles of them, Injuries, Poisoning, and Certain Other Consequences of External Causes, Signs and Symptoms and Abnormal Clinical and Laboratory Findings, Not Elsewhere Classified, Congenital Malformations, Deformations of Chromosomal Abnormalities. These are body-specific conditions or the cause of these body-specific conditions. So it goes to chapter 22, where we added the COVID and the vaping disorders. And in chapter um, section two, here's the selection of the principal diagnoses. Because remember we said section one's conventions, general coding guidelines, and chapter specific guidelines. Section two is on the selection of the principal diagnoses. Section three is on reporting additional diagnoses. And section four is on diagnostic coding and reporting guidelines for outpatient services. So again, I just copied over, copied and pasted the table of contents so you know exactly which page to go to when you're referring to these coding guidelines. Okay, let's keep going. Let's look at section one. Today we're gonna to cover section one on conventions, general coding guidelines, and chapter specific guidelines. Again, these are conventions. Conventions are our rules to coding. And it starts off with the alphabetic and the tableau list. There are two different classifications to in within ICD 10 CM. You have an alphabetic index where you look up the diagnoses and it'll give you a code. And then you refer to your tabular list at the back of the book. You're referring to that code, not the page number. That is a code that you're going to go to in your tabular list. So it says here, the alphabetic index is an alphabetical list of terms and their corresponding code. And then the tabular list is a structured list of codes divided into chapter based on body systems or conditions. So in your alphabetic index, you have an alphabetic index of disease and injury. You have an index of external causes of injury. You have a table of neoplasms and a table of drugs and chemicals. You should be able to identify where each of these alphabetic indexes are located within your code book. If you haven't yet, make sure you designate where each one of these um, indexes are within your code book so that you can use them appropriately. All right, let's look at format and structure. Alphanumeric structure. All codes start with an alphabetical character. For example, I'm using code S02. And notice I'm putting dot and spaces. It's letting you know this code expands because if you look at the way that codes are formatted in the ICD-10 book, you have a section, you have a category, you have subcategories, you have subclassifications. Sections are groups of three character codes. For example, S00 through T88. That's a group of three digit codes. Now each of these three digit codes within these sections expand. Categories are a three character code. So where S02, that is three characters. But when it expands even further to a fourth character, it becomes S02.1. And then when it becomes a subclassification, it's when it's five, six, or seven characters long. So this code can expand to S02.110A, all the way up to seven digits. That becomes a subclassification. So I've got a copy here of the S02 to show you. There is a category S02 right there. But note, it says S02, and there's a four in red that says, uh-uh. That code cannot stop at S02. It's got to go to fourth digit. So S02 is just three. So you got to expand it to the fourth. But when I get to the fourth, S02.0, it says this code needs to be seven digits long. 
in order for it to be a correct code. Now understand, when you have these little symbols here that let you know uh, fourth, nope, seventh, nope, fifth, that means this code cannot stop at S02 or S02.0 or S02.1. It has to keep expanding all the way until you get the number of digits appropriate for that code. All right, so use of codes for reporting purposes. For reporting purposes only, codes are permissible, not categories, not subcategories, and any applicable seventh character is required. So when, just what I said, that category, that S02, we just saw it had to expand to the fourth. But when we get to the fourth, if it said it had to expand to the seventh, we must carry it all the way through to the appropriate number of digits. Otherwise, it is not a legitimate code. We have what's called a placeholder character. In ICD-10-CM, it utilizes a placeholder character of an X. The X is used as a placeholder at certain codes to allow for expansion. So for example, at code, let's go back to S02.0. So up here at S02.0, it's telling us that that code needs to be seven digits long. Well, S02.0 doesn't identify any other number. Fourth digit is zero. There are no other digits after the zero. So when we say S020, but yet it gives you a seventh character, then what am I putting? Let me do it this way, S020. And then it gives you your seventh character. Notice that seventh characters right here. The appropriate seventh characters to be added to each of the code from category S02. So we've got our, we, I cannot, we can identify one of these as our seventh character. But what happens after S020? That's four. Where's five and six? We know what seven is. It's saying X is the placeholder. We put X's, S020, X, X, and then identify which one of these seventh characters should be the seventh character. Because remember, the seventh character must be the seventh character. It cannot be any other digits. So that's what it's saying as far as the placeholder. Let me re-specify this. The seventh character must always be the seventh character in the data field. If a code that requires a seventh character is not six characters before you add the seventh, then you must put a placeholder to fill in the empty characters, okay? Just as I showed you. All right, abbreviations. You'll notice that they have abbreviations NEC and NOS. NEC stands for Not Elsewhere Classified. So prior to April 1st of 2020, when COVID, well actually COVID, we we know that COVID was here in 2019. Some people said before, but as far as the U.S. and it taking over, it started in 2019. Well, and before April 1st of 2020, we did not have a code in the classification in ICD-10-CM for COVID. So we coded it to as close a code as we could. So it would have been a not elsewhere classified code. And there'll be times when until we can get a code for the condition, we have to code it as closely as we can to the condition. That's NEC, when the classification doesn't have a code for it. NOS means not otherwise specified. And I use, for example, two patients in the ER for the same condition. What if, and I use this in class and my students, I feel like if I use examples, it makes better sense. What if my husband and I went to dinner we both ordered the same meal and we got really sick. We were so sick, we ended up in the emergency room. I went in one room, he went in another. Two different doctors saw us. When I walked out and we met in the lobby, I said, let me guess, food poisoning is your diagnosis. He said, well, no, my doctor actually said I had salmonella poisoning. So see the specificity in the salmonella poisoning that my husband was given? but I was just given plain food poisoning. My doctor did not otherwise specify that I had salmonella poisoning. He just said I had food poisoning. 
because my husband's diagnosis was more specific then I could be that specific in my coding. But because my condition just said food poisoning, then I'm just gonna have an unspecified food poisoning code. So my condition was not otherwise specified where my husband's was a little more clear. It was more specified. And then we have punctuations. We have square brackets. So I'm gonna show you in the tabular list how it encloses alternative wordings or abbreviations. For example, let's look at code J00. Notice how common code is in brackets. So we're at J00. It's acute nasopharyngitis, but in brackets, it says common code. So that is our confirmation. These terms in these square brackets will enclose these alternative wordings or abbreviations and it just gives us the confirmation that we need that we're in the right place so even though i get to code j00 it says acute nasal pharyngitis well i'm looking for a common co oh it's right there common cold so that's my confirmation i'm at the right place all right let's keep going parentheses parentheses include non-essential modifiers what, what are non-essential modifiers? These are supplemental words that may or may not be present in the diagnoses, but they give greater specificity. Let's look at burns. So I'm gonna go down here, I put a copy of burn right there, main term burn. But notice it says electricity, flame, hot gas, liquid, or a hot object radiation, steam, or thermal. And then there's my code, if it didn't identify a body part. But notice these are non-essential modifiers. If the physician said it was an electrical burn, oh, I'm at the right place. Oh no, it was a hot gas burn, I'm at the right place. If you use any of the, it was a radiation burn, or steam burn, or thermal, all of these, as this says above, are supplemental words that may or may not be present in your diagnoses, but they do give greater specificity. So because they are, what if my physician did say it was an electrical burn, then I know I'm at the right place. Or if he says it was a steam burn, I'm at the right place. It's your confirmation. Then you have colons. Colons, it says incomplete terms that need one or more of the terms following the, the colon for the term to apply. And I used example code M25.3, other instability of a joint. You'll notice that there's an exclude one code there, a uh, note there that says instability of joint secondary to colon, an old ligament injury, then you don't need to be at M25.3, you need to be in the M24.2. Or if it's instability of joint secondary to removal of a joint prosthesis, then you should be at M96.8 and not M25.3. But notice how that exclude one note at code M25.3 gave me this information, but rather than writing instability of joint secondary to old ligament injury, instability of joint secondary to removal of joint prosthesis, it just wrote this part of the sentence, instability of joint secondary two, and you choose which one of these applies to the condition that you're coding. Because if it's one of these, then you need to be over in these codes instead of at M25.3, because you're gonna learn in just a minute, it's an exclude one. All right, the use of and. Now in your guidelines, for number eight, let's go down to number eight. We bypass the table of contents and we're down to number eight. It even tells you, refer to number 14. And so we'll get there in just a minute when it comes to the use of the word and. All right, let's go back to number nine. Other and unspecified codes. All right, refer to the guideline for nine. Let's see what the guideline says for nine. Other. 
Codes titled other or other specified are for use when the information in the medical record provides details for which a specific code does not exist. Your alphabetics index entry with NEC, remember we just said it's not there, in the line designates other codes in the tabular list. These alphabetic index entries represent specific disease entities for which no specific code exists, so the term is included within an other code. Remember I used, for example, before April 1st, COVID. Because there was not a code for COVID in the code book, we had to use other. And then unspecified says codes titled unspecified are for the use when the information in the medical record is insufficient to assign a more specific code. For those categories for which an unspecified code is not provided, the other specified code may represent both other and unspecified. If I were to look up, the doctor gave me specific with the food poisoning and the salmonella. If I could not find a code for the salmonella, then I would capture it under other because the physician did specify other it's just the code book doesn't specify that other. So I would code it under other and unspecified. I'd let that capture because he did specify. It's just not in the classification. All right, let's go back to my handout because I said sometimes the provider gives greater specificity than the classification has. So in those cases, refer to other specified. There are other times that the provider just does not give the specificity. However, the classification does have it, but because it wasn't given, you cannot code it. All right, let's look at the includes note. Let's go back to 10. Includes. This note appears immediately under a three character code title for further to further define or give examples of the content of the category. So that just means it's included. You're in the right place, okay? You're there, it's included. Inclusion terms are included. It means included here, same thing. But let's get to this exclude. There are two types of exclude. You have an exclude one, which means not coded here. And it gave an example of a congenital a condition you're born with versus a condition you acquire later in life. There is a difference in some cases when you go to code it. It'll say, oh, if it's a congenital condition, you're at the right place. But exclude one, if it's acquired, it's not coded here. Look at exclude two. Exclude two means not included here. And I got, for example, when two conditions, I, in my own words, I put two conditions that are usually so closely related that you have to question the provider as to whether or not he meant to identify both conditions or did he just mean one? Because if you're coding both, there are two separate codes. They're not both included at this one code that you're at. The second condition is not included here. So you're gonna to have to go somewhere else to assign a code for that. But it's exclude just means, okay, two means one of the conditions is here, but the other is somewhere else and you have to code that other condition. But exclude one, mm -mm. it's either one or the other, but it is not both. You can only have, you either born with the condition or you acquire it later in life. And I like to use, for example, diabetes. Diabetes type one, you're usually born with. Your pancreas just is not producing the insulin. But you can also have a diabetes type one that's acquired later in life. Let's just say you had a car accident and you damaged your pancreas. Therefore, it's not able to produce the insulin. And so then you're gonna have to go on insulin. So that's a, an acquired condition. So when you're coding that diabetes, you have to identify, was it a congenital or an acquired? If it was 
acquired and you're at the congenital code, then you'll see an exclude one, which means not that acquired condition. It's not coded here. Only the congenital condition is coded here. So I hope I've kind of drilled that in your head. Exclude one, not coded here. Exclude two, the other condition is not included here. You'll have to code that additional code from somewhere else. You can, but it's not included here. All right, 13, etiology, manifestation conventions, code first, use an additional code, and in diseases classified elsewhere. So let's look at the guidelines on that one. 13, it says, certain conditions have both an underlying etiology and multiple body system manifestations due to the underlying etiology. That's just, for example, patients with diabetes, because of their diabetes, tend to have other conditions. Um, I use the example in class of retinopathy. You can have retinopathy, disease of the retin retina of the eye, because of diabetes or just because you have retinopathy. But if there's a cause and effect, the diabetes caused you to have the retinopathy, then you have a, a condition that has an underlying etiology, the diabetes, that has a manifestation, retinopathy. Oh, because of your diabetes, now you have retinopathy. So for such conditions, it says the ICD-10-CM has a coding convention that requires the underlying condition be sequenced first, if applicable, followed by the manifestation code. So your coding is going to say diabetes, diabetic retinopathy. You're going to put the underlying condition first. Wherever such a combination exists, there is a note that tells you, use additional code. And it'll tell you to put it in the correct order. In most cases, the manifestation code will have the code title in diseases classified elsewhere. Certain conditions are a result of other conditions and your code book knows that in some circumstances and it will tell you that. Also, there are manifestation codes that do not have in diseases classified elsewhere. So when that is the case, you have to know to use an additional code to, under, to identify the underlying condition. And I've also put in my outline, I gave you, for example, Parkinsonism. So if I go down here and I look up in my alphabetic index, Parkinsonism, dementia, it'll say, see also dementia in diseases specified elsewhere. But there's your code, G20.C and F02.80. So notice up here where it's saying Parkinsonism, dementia, G20.C and F02.80. That's the correct coding because you're identifying the Parkinsonism. So when I go to G20 point, there's G20 Parkinsonism, it says dementia. There it is. And it's identifying different, use it, but you have an, use an additional code if applicable to identify dementia with anxiety, dementia with behavioral disturbance, dementia with mood disturbance, dementia with psychotic disturbances, dementia without behavioral disturbances, or mild neurocognitive disorders due to known physiological conditions. So notice at the G20 category, it's letting me know to use an additional code, if applicable, to identify that dementia, which is what I wanted to code. Okay? Also, 14 said, code A18.0. Let's look at what the guideline 14 says. 14 says, and, okay, this is where earlier at eight, it referred us to and. The word and should be interpreted to mean either and or or when it appears in a title. For example, tuberculosis of bones, tuberculosis of joints, and tuberculosis of bones and joints are classified to A18.0 tuberculosis of bones and joints. So let me show you that at A18.0. So when you go to A18, well, I hope I got it clear on it, it's kind of blurry. A18.0, at that subcategory right there, 
it says tuberculosis of bones and joints. But that means in within a 18.0, it could identify tuberculosis of bones. It could identify tuberculosis of joints or and or tuberculosis of bones and joints. And you notice when you come down, it's tuberculosis of the spine, tuberculosis of arthritis of other joints, tuberculosis of other bones, and other musculoskeletal tuberculosis. So it does include tuberculosis of bone and joints. Okay, just as it says. So and is interpreted as and and or. 15, let's look at what 15 says in the guidelines. 15 says with, the word with or in should be interpreted to mean associated with. There's a cause and effect relationship or due to when it appears in a code title. It's saying the alphabetic index or an instructional note in the tabular list will show a combination, a, a, a joining, a cause and effect relationship between these two. So I did make a copy of, of an example for you. Look at diabetes. If I look up diabetes in the alphabetic index, I've got first thing right out the gate, diabetes with. Usually after the main term, and look at these other main terms. So diabetes, this is where diabetes starts. It usually goes straight into alphabets, alphabetical order. But this is starting with, diabetes with amyotrophy. Diabetes with arthropathy. So see, it's showing a, showing a cause and effect. It's diabetes with these other conditions, okay? So that's what that guideline is saying. 16, it says C and C also. So let's see what the guideline for 16 says. The C instruction following a main term in the alphabetic index indicates that another term should be referenced. It's necessary to go to the main term reference with the C note to locate a correct code. The C also instruction following a main term in the alphabetic index instructs that there is another main term that may also be referenced that may provide additional alphabetic index entries that may be useful. It is not necessary to follow the C also note when the original main term provides the necessary codes. So if what you need is there, then you don't have to go to C also, because C also is just telling you some additional. But that C, you follow that C note. Let me show you. Hemarthrosis, look at this condition, hemarthrosis. Abnormal condition of blood in a joint. Non-traumatic versus traumatic. Trauma, some kind of injury occurred, or no, it's just blood in a joint. We don't know why. So if I go to the main term, hemarthrosis right there, notice in parentheses, non-essential modifier, if your doctor says it's non-traumatic, then it's M25. But look, if it's traumatic, if some type of trauma occurred to cause this abnormal condition of blood in a the joint, then you need to see sprain. Go to main term, sprain, capital letter, and then go to the site. Oh, so a sprain is an abnormal condition of blood in a joint. If it's due to trauma, then I need to go over to sprain. But see how your alphabetic index told you this? It referred you there. It told you that. 17, there's a code also note. Let's look at the guideline when it comes to code also. Code also note instructs that two codes may be required to fully describe a condition but this note does not provide sequencing direction. The sequencing depends on the circumstances of the encounter. So it depends on what's going on with your patient at your visit as to what order you'd put it in. But as far as a code also, it's telling you, code also, you're gonna need an additional code to fully describe the condition, but the order will depend on your circumstances. And then 18, 18 says default codes. A code listed next to a main term in the ICD-10-CM alphabetic index is referred to as a default code. The default code represents that condition that is most commonly associated with the main term or 
is the unspecified code for the condition. And if a condition is documented in a medical record, for example, appendicitis, without any additional information, such as acute or chronic, then the default code should be assigned. Let me show you that. Okay, let's go to main term, appendicitis. I made a copy of it. So in your alphabetic index, if I go to, ooh, it's kind of blurry. Looking for appendicitis. APP. Okay, right there. Appendicitis. Just says appendicitis, it's K37. If it was with any of these other conditions, it would be otherwise. Or if it was acute, it'd be K3580. Or if it was chronic, I'd go down here to K36. But when they just say appendicitis, then I just go to the main term appendicitis and code that code. The further specificity wasn't given. They just said appendicitis. So all I can code is appendicitis. Now, if they had identified it as acute appendicitis, then I could code acute appendicitis or chronic appendicitis. But the doctor, the provider didn't give me acute or chronic, just said appendicitis. So then the default is right at the main term, appendicitis, K37. Let me let you see that guideline again. A code listed next to a main term in the ICD-10-CM alphabetic index is referred to as a default code. The default code represents that condition that is most commonly associated with the main term or is the unspecified code for the condition. And that's what happened at appendicitis. Just plain appendicitis is appendicitis. Acute appendicitis or chronic appendicitis is another form and you can be more specific in your coding with those, okay? 19, code assignment and clinical criteria. Let's look at what it says for 19. The assignment of a diagnosis code is based on the provider's diagnostic statement that the condition exists. The provider's statement that the patient has a particular condition is sufficient to code. Code assignment is not based on clinical criteria used by the provider to establish the diagnosis. And if there is conflicting medical record documentation, query the provider. I always teach my students, when they're reading a medical record, we're coding based on the provider's documentation. But the additional documentation within the record does help us with the specificity that we need to accurately code. So we can use the additional information, but if there is a conflict, if the nurse says right, the doctor said left, or if some other identifying information is in the medical record that's not in the physician's documentation, then we can query the physician to get the specificity that we need to more accurately code. But we code as coders based on physician documentation. Okay, and that's 19. Okay, guys, this is getting long enough. It's so hard to teach on YouTube. But anyway, next week, we'll go to B in the guidelines. We finished A, and we're going to go to B in our guidelines. Again, guys, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, be so sure to do so as we cover these coding guidelines. Any coding program would have to um, teach you coding guidelines based on these guidelines that we're covering. So get your notebook. Let's go through these guidelines and cover them in detail. Any questions, feel free to email me at codemastercoach at gmail, and I'll gladly answer any questions you may have. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe.